Okay, first things first in our project, uh, safety. Uh, anytime you're using any kind of tool, you need some kind of eye protection on it. And there's different levels of eye protection depending on what you're doing. Uh, the basic safety glasses, that's the one that we use mainly in our schools. Uh, cutting wood, cutting wire, uh, these will do the protection. These will, these will be uh, fine for everything we do. Uh, they are Z87 rated, all the glasses that we uh, provide for you. And what Z87 means is it is impact resistant. So if something flies and hits it, it won't shatter little speckles of glass into your eye or wherever. Uh, it'll simply crack or, or break. Uh, it's impact resistant. If you're dealing with fi flying particles or debris, uh, you can wear safety goggles. Uh, that's another option. Uh, and this is everything you do. Uh, those guys out there do a lot of welding and I may get brave enough to do a little welding uh, for you here someday, maybe not. Uh, a welding helmet. And not always, but sometimes uh, leather palm gloves or jersey gloves. I didn't have any jersey gloves to kind of show you, but uh, that's some safety items that we'll be using. Uh, not necessarily today, but during the videos that we'll make for you, we'll be showing you uh, different types of safety and personal protective equipment. Hey guys, it's Mr. Gamble. Uh, I was going to do a little short project here today and kind of show you some tools I'm working with and a uh, little project I'm working on. I had a neighbor gave me this old trailer and I've uh, done a little work on it on the suspension and stuff and painted it up. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sideboards on the floor. Uh, I floored it with some old decking boards that I'd had from an old deck I had removed. And I'm going to put some sideboards and uh, a tailgate on the back of it. So that's what we're into today and I'll show you some tools that we'll, we'll be working with and uh, we'll get started here. Hey guys, I want to show you a few tools we'll be using today. Uh, pretty simple and common tools, uh, but I'll show them to you and kind of explain them as I go along using them. Uh, we're going to use a simple carpenter's pencil. Carpenter's pencils are a little larger than normal pencils. They're flat. Uh, they're uh, thicker lead, so it's not as easy to break them when you're putting marks uh, on wood or rough surfaces. We're going to use a little speed square here. It simply gives you a 90 degree angle. That way you can cut stuff uh, square. You don't want stuff to be cut uneven looking. Uh, so the square is going to be used today. We're going to be using a 25 foot tape measure. Uh, we'll measure off uh, the size of everything we need to do on this and I'll kind of explain it as we go by them too. Uh, this one's marked off in sixteenths. Uh, it is a 25 foot. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that the one line past the 25 there, that's the foot symbol. If it has two lines, that would be in inches. Uh, but simple 25 foot tape measure. Uh, we'll be using 18 volt battery drill or cordless drill. Uh, this one is chucked up with a Phillips tip. It'll be for the screws that we'll be using. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about this battery drill while we're here. Uh, behind the trigger, it has forward reverse. Simply we'll go forward or reverse. Uh, on the top, it has a number one and number two. That is the speeds of the drill. So of course, two is your fastest speed, slow is your, or one is your lowest speed. Uh, this particular drill here does have a variable speed trigger. I know some older drills didn't have, but nowadays about all triggers do. So what that means is the harder you pull it, the faster the drill turns. Uh, this one also has a clutch on it. So if you can see these numbers here, as you turn and dial it down, say you go to one, it'll only sink a screw uh, a certain depth to each clutch number. For example, as that's going, I can hold it and I can stop it. And as you turn it higher, it gets harder and harder to stop. And when you get it up to drill, uh, it of course will not stop. It'll continuously drill. So that's a clutch in a drill. Uh, also, this drill right here has a keyless chuck. So what a keyless chuck is, is on the end of the drill, it simply will twist with your hand and it'll remove the bits and you can put your bits back in and twist and you'll hear it ratchet and grab it. Uh, that's a keyless chuck. Uh, nowadays, uh, very, very few things have a keyed chuck on it. The keyed chuck's a little thing that looks like a T with a gear on it that you see people put in and twist uh, to hold the bit in. That's a cordless drill. 
Also kind of a unique tool we're using today is an oscillating tool. So here's an oscillating tool. If you've never seen one before, they are unique. Uh, this particular one here uh, has a, uh, a method of quickly changing out your uh, blades or sanding device, whichever one you're using. I'll, I'll demonstrate real quick what, what, uh, how this works. So on this one, you flip up the lever and you simply unroll it. And you can see this opening as I twist. See it opening? Uh, real quick, while we're talking about it also, here's some different blades that, that I use with it. This is just a standard saw blade. It is round and you can cut more surface area with these. Now all these blades I'm showing you is made to cut wood, uh, plastics, anything that's pretty soft. It won't cut uh, hard metals or anything of that nature. It will cut softer type metals, but it's mainly made for wood and plastics and softer type metals. Uh, here's another style of it. Uh, they're the same way. Uh, it's got markings and measurements on the side you can notice because you can plunge into a wall and that tells you how deep you're going or into wood or whatever you're working with. There's two different types of uh, blades. Today we'll be using this particular one. I'll lay it to the side here. Uh, you also, this set up here, uh, can put a sanding block on it. So this hooks in and you simply tighten the back of it up and snap it down and then you now have a sander. So this is a multiple purpose tool, really, really useful. Uh, but for today, we'll be using just a blade to cut out the sides of the wood on the trailer. Uh, one quick thing too before I go here, and I'll show you the last tool I've been using, is I got a little board here and I want to demonstrate a square real quick. So the edges of a board are presumed square most of the time. In some cases, uh, they are not, but most of the time they're square. And so with a square, you can lay the flat edge against it. And then when you put a mark on it, that gives you a true line, true straight line across that board. So that's what a square does real quick. I'll be right back at you in just a second. I wanna show you the next one we'll be using. Okay, the next tool that I'm gonna be using is a power tool. It's a table saw. Uh, it's a very basic table saw. So uh, the table saw will cut many different sizes of material and things. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our blade. So I can dial this up to where it goes above the piece that I'm cutting. Uh, my slide bar here, I can adjust at whatever thickness or width that I want it to be cut. Pretty common sense. Once you get it where you need it, you lock it down. Uh, this particular little table saw, it's uh, pretty handy, but it's just a home use one. It's not for a commercial or industrial type use. This one also will have a, a setting that you can angle your blade left or right. Uh, it also has a push guide that can go on these rails. And the purpose of this is if you don't have your guard on, you could lay, lay a board in it at whatever degree you wanted and simply push it through. Uh, the table saw is very handy. Uh, people use them uh, typically to do larger stuff and they have tables sometimes even built around them to do like four foot by eight foot uh, plywood and other types of wood. Uh, but today it'll cut me some good straight true lines better than I can with a, a skill saw. So that's what we chose to use today. Okay, the next thing I've done, I took my tape measure and I put a mark at 16 inches. Uh, the shadow you might not be able to see real good. And then I took a square, put it on the edge of the board, and I put me a straight line at 16 inches. Uh, this time I set my guard up, that way I could cut a true uh, square cut. So I'm gonna show you here, I'll go ahead and cut this board. Okay guys, I got all my 16 inch pieces cut. 
uh, now I need to rip them uh, three and a half inches wide. So I set my table saw up uh, three and a half inches. I'm gonna set it against the guard and uh, turn it on, push it through. And to keep your hands away, uh, I use a push stick at the end where you can just push it through it where your hands is nowhere near the blade at any time. And then that should be uh, the four pieces we need for our uprights. Okay guys, here's my brackets for my uprights. And uh, what I done is I took a combination square and I went around them and I made my marks. You can see the area I need to cut out. Uh, this is what makes the oscillating tool very, very handy. Uh, instead of having to remove that board or try to take a jigsaw or something to cut that out, uh, this oscillating tool here, you can just plunge right down and cut it all the way around with it. Uh, so I'm gonna go around the four corners and uh, cut these out with the oscillating tool. Uh, I'm gonna show you here real quick, uh, just on one cut, because it's kind of hard with one hand to use this, uh, kind of the way these work. So I'm gonna do it on the edge here where it doesn't matter, where I don't have to follow exact. So when you turn this on, it simply cycles side to side. Okay guys, we got all four of our notches cut out. Now you can see all the way through. Something I wanted to mention is uh, anytime you're using a power tool and you have an extension cord, make sure that cord is less than 100 feet long. They sell a lot of 100 foot extension cords and those are really hard on your power tools. Uh, the reason being is uh, in electricity, uh, everything past 100 foot you have voltage drop so uh, with voltage drop the motor won't turn at the correct rpms uh, it won't have the correct amount of power exactly to it to to work properly uh, this stuff i'm showing you here too remember i'm an electrician i'm not a carpenter uh, these carpenters out here teachers uh, and welders and all these other guys they are professionals at their field and they uh they're teaching it for a reason. But uh, these are just some home skills that you can gather when you take a class like BAM, uh, Building Department Maintenance. It'll teach you a wide variety of different things and a wide variety of tools to use. Uh, so we'll we'll make this up some sideboards right here in a second and stick them on, we'll see how it looks. Okay, we got our side pieces stuck in and our side rail screwed on with this old rough lumber. Doesn't look great, but if it's pressure washed down and scraped and painted look okay be usable uh, i was going to show you here on the drill before we stop today uh, about the clutch remember i was talking about the clutch it'll only let you drive a screw so deep uh, i'm gonna turn this clutch way down uh, i took the phillips bit out and i've got a, a quarter inch head screw that i'm going to use and i was going to show you how these work clutch so here we go see how it won't grab it in it doesn't have enough power because the clutch is letting it slip so what I can do it's tough to do this one handed but it gives you an idea of what a clutch is so I can turn this up to say 13 and put it on there see how it sunk it and then it uh, stopped so I want these to go even deeper. So I've been running these on the drill setting. So there we go. All right, that's our little project for today. Uh, we'll come up with something and we'll see you again next time, thanks.